Amazing things happen inside an ant nest, and we get to delve inside and have a look at what's going on. So let's get into the video. It always fascinates me looking inside a nest. And today we're going to have a look at my colony of meat ants or Arutomermex purpius. We get to have a look at their activities in the outworld and inside the nest where all the action happens. Always fun looking at this colony though and observing them in their outworld. Plenty of workers around the nest entrance here, just guarding and making sure nothing gets inside and harms this colony. Now this whole build has got a nice big aquarium tank, three foot tank, and then we have these 3D printed nests. There's 12 modules in total, and we'll go inside and have a look at the activities. But before we do that, let's have a look outside in the outworld. So I've got the raised mound here, which you would have seen if you've seen the updates on this colony and the build I did on their outworld and set up. And as we pan throughout their outworld, we can see they've been busy. They've uh, cut down a lot of the grass, made some room, moved a lot of the stones and the twigs around, and really made the outworld their own. It really is fascinating to watch them here in the outworld. Always busy, always industrious and up to something. Constantly searching for that food. Food that they can take into the nest for their brood. The brood ever hungry for some protein for their growth. And the workers are running around looking for those carbohydrates or those sugars that they desperately need as well. And there's plenty of workers here in the outworld as you can see, as they run around and keep themselves busy, I guess, in the outworld. I could sit here for ages just watching them go about their business. Around their water source, they're constantly looking and lapping up more water. Water is essential for keeping your colony healthy. And then I have one of these sugar water feeders as well, making the solution myself. And they're really good, these liquid feeders. So good to be able to provide the necessary water and sugar water to your colony without having to go in there every single day to top up. Always busy and always digging. Now the base of this outworld, I have made a plaster. It's plaster mixed with some um, coloring or some tints in there, just to give it that brown effect. But as you can see, they're busily looking for some water here. Their water source and one of their liquid feeders, dragging that back into the nest to regurgitate or use trophallaxis to feed the workers in their colony. But how beautiful it is to observe them. Some are stationary like this, perhaps having a little micro sleep as they sit on the rocks, just waiting, waiting for some action, waiting for something to happen inside the nest. Having a little rest from their daily duties of caring for the brood or foraging in the outworld for food. We've got a big rubbish pile here that you can see in the outworld, just in one corner where they've dragged everything over, including some seeds from some honeydew I gave them, which they loved but they've dragged it all over here into their little rubbish tip. And from time to time, I'll clean that one out for them. Plenty of workers here, as you see though, on the entrance into their nest. I've got the two entrances here, and it goes down into a Y into the nest, which I think gives it a nice effect. Nice and raised up like they would in the wild. What a beautiful, beautiful effect though we have here. Beautiful coloring on the workers. Got the, you can see where they get that name of that purpius or the sort of purpley colors, purpley red for their head and their thorax. And then they have that sort of metallic-y color on their abdomen as well. Really a beautiful looking species. Now this species does not sting, doesn't spray formic acid. It really just overwhelms with its numbers and its very powerful jaws that it uses to tear up food. And as you may know, it's known as the meat ant. They love their meat. They love chewing on anything. 
Look at them. This one here guarding. It's got its jaws or mandibles open, ready to attack, and it's just sensing the air to see what is around it. Standing guard here on the rock. Really, really cool to watch. So let's dive in and have a look at the nest, the nest that these are kept in. As you can see, there is, these are all modular, um, set up from the mound in the outworld. We have this tube that run in, runs into the nest here, and then we can have a good look inside the nest. You'll notice there's a bit of dirt stuffed up into the corners just to seal up the different compartments fully. Maybe they're not 100% airtight when they were printed. So they've jammed all the dirt in there just to make sure there's no airflow going on, which is really cool. I guess it's part of keeping the humidity just the way they like it in the nest. And we'll get the macro camera out soon and we'll have a real close-up look and see what we can see inside the nest. But how cool it is just to be able to see all of the brood, what actually goes on inside a nest, the things you normally do not get to see. And that's what I really like about having formicarium like this um, these nests with the clear lids so you can see inside them um, You really get to see what actually does happen inside there the glimpse into the underworld Now this is something that I was really happy that I captured and this is trophallaxis happening inside the nest So we've got a worker here that is regurgitated we use that trophallaxis um, It could be water or maybe sugar water, but it looks like it might be water that it's uh, regurgitated here for some of the workers one big um, bubble of water and they're all just drinking down on that rehydrating themselves in the nest many of the workers will not leave the nest ever at this stage they're there tending to the brood cleaning uh, moving eggs around doing other duties inside the nest keeping other workers clean so someone has to bring in the water and the food for these workers and it's just beautiful to be able to capture one regurgitating like this for the other workers to enjoy. Around the nest there's plenty of other things going on. Here we have part of a mealworm that they've dragged in from the outworld and they're eating some of that protein, the essential protein. Now the workers don't need the protein, the queen will need some, but they don't, it is purely for the larvae. They need to regurgitate some of those proteins from their social stomach to feed the larvae. But again, something you wouldn't normally see here is they've dragged a piece into the nest so they can be safe and secure and eat that protein without being interrupted or worrying about getting eaten. And this is the reason they need so much protein. Look at all of the larvae here. These are some fresh eggs, not very old. In fact, they are larvae, not eggs, um, but very newly hatched from the egg and developing nicely here. Beautiful stack of them, all glistening, glistening white like little grains of cooked rice. But each one of these larvae in the nest has to be carefully groomed and cleaned by a worker to ensure that there's no mold or bacteria growing on them that could really harm the development or threaten the actual colony and all of the brood. They pick them up so delicately here with their mandibles and you notice their antennae they just are touching them lightly with. Antennae are like their fingers as they touch and gently assess what's going on. But throughout this whole nest of mine it is packed, packed full of brood. There is so much in here. Every little compartment has something at different stages of their development. Now one thing with the meat ants is that they don't have cocoons. They actually just have the pupae that, that go along. So we go from the egg to the larvae and then to a pupae which you see a white sort of worker and then it slowly hardens and animates and comes to life as a brand new worker in the colony. And the exoskeleton just hardens over time and they, those colors start to develop nicely. So plenty of action in here, always something nice to look at. You can see some of the compartments, they've actually put dirt on the roof as well, just to make it completely dark. But what we want to do is 
see if we can find the Queen in here as well. Queen Opal and see what she has been up to. Um, always interesting and sometimes quite tricky to be able to find the Queen in a nest like this. And this is what I was talking about. Every larvae in here needs to be cleaned. And we've got the worker here, not using its mandibles, but its mouth parts on the underside, really to clean every little inch of those larvae. So essential to keep the brood clean. And when you think how many of these larvae are inside this nest, it really is amazing. And you, you basically know why the nest has to be a certain size with all of these workers tending to the brood. Look at it, you can see it here, maneuvering it, cleaning every part of it, making sure it's nice and healthy because that's a future worker that is needed to care for the queen and to care for the colony. Absolutely amazing to be able to witness these things going on. It rolls it out of the way and then it starts cleaning the one underneath as well. In other chambers, the work continues exactly the same as well. Now the workers will move the brood around depending on the humidity needed for them or the area that they need to be cared for. Quite often the eggs will be in one area, then we'll have the small eggs that have hatched into tiny little larvae. They'll be in one area and then they start moving the sizes around, around the nest and the sizes are generally kept the same no matter where they are. So the very larger ones are all kept together little ones with little ones and the workers all know exactly what they need to do to look after that brood. So what do you think looking inside a nest? Is it amazing to be able to see this? Things that many people don't get to see? Do you like an open nest like this or do you prefer a formicarium of some style? It's interesting isn't it here we have Queen Opal there she is big black iridescent Queen sitting there and underneath her some freshly laid eggs and some larva that have just hatched absolutely amazing she is doing so well and she will be a mother to this colony the colony that will be can be upwards of a hundred thousand several hundred thousand workers for the large colonies on the outside some people even estimate there may be up to a million workers inside one of these colonies, all raised by one single queen. Totally amazing. But you can see how much food that they need to keep going. So have you enjoyed having a look on the inside here? All of these chambers full of brood? Certainly is amazing. In the outworld, it's always a flurry of activity. And I hope you've enjoyed looking at this update on my meat ant colony and exactly what is going on. I'm glad I'm able to share it with you and I hope to get a bit more consistent with some of these videos. But thank you so much for joining me here and uh, really helping the channel grow as well. I really do appreciate it. And none of this is possible without my wonderful Patreon supporting me. But isn't it nice just to have these nests here that I'm able to expand on as this colony grows and grows and I'll share the journey with you all. But a thank you to my amazing Patreons. Thank you Osido Gordo 25 Gordon C, Ant Nation, The Dragon Bloom, Scooter213, Serena and Terrius. Thank you so much. For as little as $1 a month you can support the channel and you'll get early access to videos, behind the scenes information and plenty of other perks on different levels as well. So I really appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. There's a video there recommended for you, which I think you might really like. And also, there's one recommended by YouTube. Thanks for watching and always remember, happy and keeping.